Hey guys, how y'all doing? Bionicle Source here, back with another dinosaur review, and in this video we are going to be taking a look at the Dilophosaurus by Papo, a company that I have mixed feelings about. Credit goes to Blue Beast Will for the idea uh, for that intro, and I will be making similar Dinosaur Island styled intros for all of my reviews from now on. I think it's a great idea, and I definitely quite like it. So without further ado, let's get into this video and take a look at this figure, which I quite like, actually. So for those who are new to these reviews, my system of reviewing involves a rating system from F to A based off of overall appearance, detail, and the most important one, scientific accuracy. A final rating will be determined from these smaller ratings at the end of the review. So without further ado, let's actually get started. As far as overall look is concerned, this figure definitely is probably going to rate high. It has great texturing overall, a very dynamic pose with great sculpted musculature, very, very lifelike, and that's one thing we can always count on with Papo figures, is that they will be incredibly realistic, if not accurate, but we'll get to that later, evidently. One thing about this figure is that it is not a true biped, it requires its right front limb to be on the ground to stand, its right arm which is a bit of an annoyance, but I think for most people the pose is active enough that it probably makes up for it, along with the fact that it is bouncing on its arm and not the more common tail balance, which we so often and so unfortunately see in dinosaur figures these days. Slightly straying away from overall look, I would like to point out that this figure actually has a feature of articulation, a movable jaw. Not something we see in a whole lot of dinosaur figures, but Papo usually does it for most of their theropods. The inside of the mouth looks quite good, tongue is well detailed, teeth are well defined, everything looks really nice. I quite like this figure and I, I quite like its overall appearance. So I'm going to give it a straight A. Not an A+, but a very high rating nonetheless. Let's move on to detail. Starting off with the sculpt, this figure is very well detailed. Like I mentioned a few seconds earlier, its teeth are well defined. And along with that, its fingers are well defined, its tail is well defined, those little spines on its neck, its crests, everything is very clearly and, and definitely sculpted uh, well. Um, this figure just looks great. I mean, you can't deny that it is a truly lifelike and realistic figure, like I said earlier. Uh, the musculature looks great. It all looks incredibly realistic and believable. It looks like this figure is really in this position, really with its skin folding and, and wrinkling in these little minute and detailed ways. And good lord, even on this relatively small figure, measuring it in only probably five inches or so, I'm not sure the exact length, but probably something along those lines, even with this small size, almost every single scale is individually sculpted. Incredibly, incredibly impressive. And huge props to Papo for working so hard to make their figure as good as they can get it. Now moving on to the part I'm a little more on the fence about, the paint job. Now, I don't really have a problem with the color choice or the patterning, I just think that the paint job isn't exactly done very well. It's fine to have dull colors, or neutral colors, or earth tones, whatever you want to call them. Papo does this for almost all their figures, and it works out fine for most. So it's not the colors exactly on this, but it's how they've administered them. It's a little sloppier than most, and while this figure is on the small side, it still seems like they could have done better. But beyond that, my biggest problem with the paint job is the glossiness. I don't know for the life of me why Papo gave this figure a gloss over its coat of paint, but they did. And it gives the whole figure this shiny, almost wet look. And it is incredibly weird. I just don't get it. I don't get why they did this, and I think it looks really off and really odd, and it really detracts from the realism that this figure achieves on all of its other areas. So overall for the detail, I give it a B-. minus. It could be a lot better if they just hadn't given it that odd coat of gloss over the paint. Besides that though, the sculpt is great and I can't deny how detailed this figure truly is. Alright, so now time to talk about scientific accuracy. And unlike most Papo figures, this one actually does a pretty good job. Its skin texturing is perfectly plausible. They didn't include feathers, but this is such a primitive uh, theropod that 
there was no need to. The teeth are in the right place, the head is a perfect, uh, skeletally accurate shape, the crests look good. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention their paint job, which is nice, very bright red. Uh, right number of digits, as far as I can tell, although I do believe many reconstructions of Dilophosaurus actually do include a vestigial fourth finger, but that is optional, as I don't think we actually have a great deal of material from this creature's hands. But overall, there's nothing really to complain about. There's nothing that's crazy and up-to-the-minute accuracy, but there's nothing that's way stuck back in the 1980s, by any means. So, I have to say, this figure rates quite good when it comes to scientific accuracy. In fact, I'm going to give it a B plus. It would get an A minus or even an A if it weren't for the fact that the color scheme is rather conservative. Overall, I quite like this figure. The scientific accuracy, while not insanely up to the minute, is undeniably solid. The detail, while I hate the gloss, is very good, and the overall appearance is striking and lifelike. Overall, I think Papo did a great job with this, and I rate it at about an A minus. So, thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you soon. This is Bionicle Saurus, signing out.